Good afternoon, AI fans, and welcome back to the desert. We're here in fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada, midway through day two of three days of incredible coverage here at the absolutely exhilarating and pumping Dell Tech Week. My name is Savannah Peterson, joined by Dave Vellante for another fantastic afternoon. Dave, we're killing it. Big money, big money. Big money, oh, I know. Ha have you been looking forward to this one? Yes, absolutely. Are you, are you excited to have Always, this conversation yes, about money? Course. Well, we are super excited to intro our next guest to the show, Yvonne McGill, the CFO of Dell, welcome. Well, thank you for having me. It's so nice to have you here. You know, we're, we're being a little cheeky before the show got <laughs> started, but artificial intelligence isn't cheap. So we have a lot of fun questions for you. Before we dig in, this is a huge week for Dell, big announcements, got to be very exciting. You're, Dell is having quite the year as well. Absolutely. How does it feel for you to be here today? Oh, it's so exciting. I am yeah. so thrilled about where we are. I, I feel like this, uh, this time was uh, really set up for us. Um, it's, it's perfect for us. AI is, is giving us so much momentum, but it's really building on that foundational layer that we've, we've been working on for over 40 years, right? So it's just the next um, uh, chapter in, uh, in our uh, evolution. So the stock's up 180% since you took over. Is it, Heck yeah. is it liquidity back to shareholders? Is it AI or is it Yvonne? I mean, what's the yeah. story? Hey. I don't know, it depends on all who you ask. Love. It depends on who you ask, but I'm going to say it's, it's all of that. Yeah. But, yeah. But, uh, but I do think it's, it's what I talked about. It's the foundational layer that we've had, but it's really this AI um, evolution or however you want to describe it and really how we play differentially in, in that opportunity. It's a recognition of how differentiated we are. And so it's been, it's been great to, uh, to be a part of and see it, I think, just the beginning of where we're going. Michael told a little story, he alluded to it in the keynote and he talked in an analyst session, that he sat down with his leadership team and said in five years, if we don't change, we're going to be out of business, so let's disrupt ourselves. Uh -huh. As the CFO, did that like, freak you out? Like, well, wait a minute, let's talk risk management here. Or were you just, okay, let's go. I absolutely love his approach um, and where we're headed. And so, you know, you have to change to, you have to evolve to continue, right? And so, let's go, I'm all in. <laughs> of course, the CFO, I'm control, we're doing all of that, we're going to do it the right way, right. but we're moving fast and, and we're changing and it's, it's giving us the opportunity to question everything we do. And, you know, decide are we doing the right stuff and how do we make time to do the things that will add even more value for our customers and our shareholders. All in. One of the things that I've always found incredibly striking and impressive about Dell is the ability to trim the fat when going for a goal. The, the ability to shed tech or companies or really anything in order to achieve and, and to be in the position. I think that's a big part of the reason we're seeing them have the moment that they're having right now how do you, you must have such a fascinating job, how do you prioritize and help these teams who are obviously fighting for budget, uh -huh. your budget, equivocally, yeah. how, do you, how, how do you prioritize and organize that? Especially when things are moving so fast like they are right now. Well, I think that, that's what makes it so fun, right? Because yeah. everyone, all the ideas are coming and we go through and, and we, we work through and look at the, you know, the value generation for our customers, for, for obviously for ourselves, and work that through with, with Michael, with Jeff, and the team to say, hey, where should we spend our money? Because we don't have unlimited funds, right? Okay. And so it's all about um, getting that, the proper um, investment and taking risks too. You have to take risks to uh, to deliver value. So so we're doing all of that. So it must have been three or four years ago. I think I'm sure you were there. I was at the uh, New York City uh -huh. financial analyst meeting, yep. and uh, the balance sheet wasn't where you wanted it. Tom stood up in front of the audience and said, "We have." I think he gave seven levers that you could you could pull. Uh -huh. Value creation. He laid out this framework. Tom Tom Sweet. Is, uh, Yvonne's predecessor, but great mentor to you, and yep. fantastic, you know, uh, financial Absolutely. leader. So, it looks like you've pulled a lot of those those levers. What does that value creation framework look like now? Um, you know, what 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 levers have has AI, you know, given you opportunity to, well, to pull? Well, I think you know we we, we laid out our long term value creation framework in in October right. at our um, at our security analyst meeting, and we said, you know, hey, we're going to grow at three to four um, percent. You're going to see it be different. We said or more, right? So we're not limiting ourselves to what we laid out in the framework, and so we talked about that. We talked about an eight percent or more 
more. There's lots of or mores um, growth in our um, in our uh, non-GAAP diluted earnings per share. We're going to then um, deliver great cash flow, and we're going to. Uh, then return that to our shareholders, right? Through um, dividend and, right. Uh, and share repo, right? And we said we'd do at least a 10% dividend increase um, every year for the next five years. We did 20% this year, right? And so it's been, it's been really great. And this AI momentum um, is, is giving us you know, a faster growth um, expectation than what we laid out in that long-term framework. But that was a mid-cycle a mid framework that we laid out. So you know, we're, we're excited about where we're headed. I love the pluses, and so I'm all about delivering even more revenue growth than we wanted, um, or than we laid out in the long-term framework, and even more profitability well, and, and return to shareholders. It, of course, you left it to us to figure out what mid-cycle means. I did, so was, I did. That was very yeah. clever, yeah, I yeah, thought. Yeah. Give yourself a little leeway yeah. there, so well, good, you know. good for you. Well, but the amazing dynamic is, you, Dell's, Dell's been shrinking, actually, as a company, because you grew so fast during the pandemic. That's right. And yet, the, the street absolutely loves the story. I mean, it helps give you know, share, share buybacks and, and dividends. Sure. But there's very clearly the execution, the AI, it's like, people were yeah. looking for, AI trades, you know, beyond NVIDIA, beyond Broadcom, right. and then all of a sudden, you know, post GTC, people woke up and said, wow, Dell well, is yeah. They want AI the ecosystem. They want the full solution, not just the chip. They want the network, they want the connectivity, yeah. That's right, and that's what I, that's what I love yeah. about our portfolio, that's right. designed for, for, for now, for this environment, right? Everything from our AI-enabled servers, but it goes through, you're going to generate all this data, you need to store it somewhere. We have storage, right? Um, then you need to have a device to be able to um, really create value from all the data that you generate, right? And we we have that. You've got get some of those right here with you. Yeah. So um, so that'll that'll continue. And then we've got services, support. You know, our, our world class supply chain. We are so differentiated, and it's it's a really exciting future. I mean, the opportunities for AI. I think you call it AI in, right? Inside in, of, on, inside yes. of Intel. Um, are pretty substantial for a company that's whatever, 85, 90 billion dollars. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've heard a lot, we had meetings with Jen Felch, uh -huh. uh, Jeff Boudreau, obviously Jeff Clark was just recently talking right. about some of the initiatives that you have internally. Mm -hmm. uh, um, you're involved in that. Absolutely. As Savannah said, a AI ain't cheap. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> I, we talked about this in Austin, like how do you pay for all this stuff? Do you have to rob from other budgets? Do you have to sort of have gain sharing? How do you think about that as a CFO? Well, I, I really think of it as, as you know, trying to identify the, the true value drivers and then eliminating, eliminating work. And, and really, we've been working and focusing on, you know, internally, focus on that foundational layer. Um, and when we have um, all of our data set, we have the foundational layer built, then I can drive from there, right? I can, I can accelerate from there. But you have to take the time to uh, make sure your data is clean so that you can drive the outcomes that you're desiring. So that's what we're focused on internally and there's so much efficiency to be had and you know, you'll know, you see that in, in our, our results, you saw that in um, what we guided for the full year from a, a spend level. We're going to grow while, um, it, while investing and um, in you know and delivering the outcomes that we want, right? But we're not going to grow all aspects, right? OPEX we guided flat. Right? right, and it's 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 the efficiency that we're gonna we're a great example of what other companies can can do. You've been at Dell for 27 years, yeah, and you've just been about. and yeah. and you just completed your first year as CFO. Congratulations mm -hmm. yep. on Thanks. that. Thanks. Yep. Yes. When you started, mm -hmm. it's hard for me to believe you've been there for 27 years. You look <laughs> younger than that. But when you started, you. <laughs> when you started at Dell. Could you have imagined that we would be here today? Did you have any idea? I, I, I didn't. I didn't have the vision of, of what um, Dell would be today, what Dell Technologies would be today. And I didn't know, um, you know, I don't know if you all knew what you wanted to do the whole time during your career, but I aspired to continue to learn, develop, and grow. And what a, what a great company. And I stayed at Dell um, because of um, the, the team, because of Michael, because of Jeff, what, what great leaders, but because we're never done. We're not the same company we were when I joined 27 years ago. We're, you, you know, we couldn't have envisioned it, and what will we be in another, you know, I know we're just doing our 40th anniversary. Yeah. I probably, 
you know, won't be working in another 40 years. Um, but you know, I can only, I, I can't even imagine what, what will be. And so I love that we're always developing and, and changing and adapting to the environment and leading the way. Oh yeah, what's the culture like? You mentioned Jeff and Michael. Uh -huh. We've had, we just got to talk to both of them today, which is really cool. Uh -huh. and, and there's a different level of humility around the Dell leadership that I find really refreshing. What's it like kicking it with the C-suite? What's the culture like in that in those meetings? Ah, oh, it's it's uh, it's really it's really wonderful. It's challenging, right? Because we you know there's you don't say yes to everything. It's an open environment. Mm -hmm. We we um, we're better together, right? And so I think that's that's what I really appreciate about working at Dell is that you know everyone's voice matters and it's taken into account. And then you've got great leaders like Michael and, and Jeff that are you know, helping to continue to drive us forward, right? But they're taking into account all of the different perspectives and, and trade-offs, because there's so many different choices you can make, right? right? Michael was telling us, one of the analysts was asking Michael about, okay, well, when you do this, we're going to disrupt ourselves thing. Yes. That puts a lot of pressure on people. How do you deal with that, that pressure? From their standpoint, how do you how do you account for the, the the stress that 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 might cause? And as a millennial, you'll appreciate this. He said, "Well, you know, if you're like 35 years old and 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 you're not doing this, you might ask some tough questions. Like, why? Like, what are we waiting for? That's right. And so he says it's this interesting balance culturally. Yeah, right. Of you know, yeah, you got this pressure, but also everybody's you know bought in because they want." to see this change. We want to see they a change, and we, we talk about you know, uh, making a decision, moving forward, and then you know, we do course correction, right? Um, and we, we want to go fast, and so you, know, you, you have to keep, you got to start moving forward fast, and then, and then navigate as, as you go, right? You can't, you can't pause, you can't stay still. Um, it's a fascinating moment, though, when you think of Dell's history, and you think about when you guys were you know, prior to EMC, really getting into enterprise, mm -hmm. making a lot of acquisitions of you know, really good companies. Yeah. But it, it, it never got you to where you, you wanted to get, and so, hence 60 plus billion dollar acquisition of, of EMC, mm -hmm. which was remarkable what the Absolutely. outcome was. Um, and now, this AI opportunity, it's like, you're just diving in, you keep saying all in. All it's in. It's like you really have clarity of a vision on the opportunity, and it's impressive how fast you're reacting and innovating. It Dell's is. often criticized, oh no, they, no innovation out of Dell. Well, this, I've said it today, there's all innovation. It's, it, right. it, is, it is so exciting, and to see how, how much faster we're bringing you know, solutions to market, you know, that we talked about it today, right? The development cycle being nine months versus two years. On, you know, it's, it's, crazy. It's, it's, yeah. it's remarkable. And right. the portfolio, and yeah, it's just expansion so of the portfolio, expanding. and you know, again, uh, you know, what will we be in five years? Something even better than we are today. Oh, I love Ten that. years, twenty it's interesting years. Interesting. When we'll keep moving. I remember when Jeff took over, we had the responsibility for the EMC uh -huh. integration. He, he, that portfolio needed rationalization, right? and so he attacked it. He was Absolutely. the perfect man for the job. <laughs> You can see that swinging now in the other direction with all the optionality you have with different microprocessors and, mm -hmm. and GPUs and NPUs and CPUs and, and I guess it will be what it is. Well, customers will, I guess, di dictate that pace, but That's right. do you expect that portfolio to get you know, more granular? Yeah, I, I do, and but I expect it to continue to evolve. But but I expect us, you know, again, we and we talked about it today. You know, we won't be the, you know, we're going to partner with um, with whoever we need to partner with to bring the solutions that our customers are looking for. And so I think that's the, you know, you, you did the the way back. We were we were doing lots of acquisitions. Now we we I think are embracing that we can partner um, successfully with, with so many, right? We're about delivering the solutions our customers want and, and making that happen. And that so is one of those levers. I was sitting in the, the, uh, the partner event. Oh, it was very uh -huh, nice, uh -huh. very nice. There was a thousand people in there. It's Big amazing. comfy chairs, <laughs> and, uh, but they were charged up. And um, I, think, I think, what, half of the revenue goes through 
just, channel partners? Just, is just that about, about right? yeah, just about half half of our revenue goes through channel partners. Yes. So a lot of upside. Yeah. That's right, and you know we're differentiated too because we have that direct relationship with our customers too, and so I, I love that um, that part of it too is that we hear directly from our customers, but but we value our our channel partners, we value all of the relationships, and so you know we can we can hear differentially from from you know those that are doing the the purchasing yeah. and, and innovating. You can tell you can you can feel the collaboration here very much. You see it on yeah. stage. It's oh, awesome. Yeah. We've said a lot of really positive things. What's the biggest risk to this velocity? You know, it's it's hard to it's hard to talk about the biggest risk because because I think it's you know it's just like I, I talked about earlier. You know, we're gonna there's gonna be things that do, don't go exactly as we intended, but mm -hmm. we're going to learn and keep moving keep moving forward at, at a very fast pace. And so you know, I think it, the risk um, is you know. Not something I'm overly concerned about. It's execution Good. risk. It's execution well, I mean, it's really risk, is. right? From, yeah. No, but this is a moment, yeah. right? We're, we're yeah. talking. I mean, I say this with love. Yeah. CFO yeah. is not always the most risk pro person on a team. Usually, very risk adverse when it comes to certain bets. And to hear you with such confidence as we approach this really wild moment, which not approach, we're in this moment. But it's, <laughs> but it's, but it's, but it's, it's validating. I don't know. It's great to hear you say that. It's great to hear. I mean, we have, you know, I am, I am the CFO, right? So we have the proper controls in place and, you yeah. know, accountability and everything. And, um, but, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm leaning in um, to the future because I believe, I believe that it is, it is bright and we're going to enable it. I mean, there's external risks that are out of your control. Absolutely. Who knows what's happening with geopolitics and, yeah, well, there's I, always I mean, inherently risk. I mean, at some point. You can't control that, right? right? I mean, we yeah. are in an AI bubble. I mean, yeah. who knows, I have no idea. It's going to stop at some point. I don't, I don't know what form it'll take. It doesn't but, have to. But, well, we'll see. <laughs> well, I, you know, it, it's going to be really interesting because, you know, silicon is a cyclical business. Mm -hmm. But, you know, every silicon CEO says, no, now nah, we've figured that out. And so <laughs> we'll see whether it's memory or, or GPUs. So we'll see. But, Again, you can't control that. You, you, right. you don't want to hold back and not, Al Shugart said to me this one time, it's way worse not to be there when the market hits. That's right. Than, than it is to you know, be conservative and, right. you know, and, and not get hit when the market tanks. So you got to go. We got to yeah. go and we're going fast. <laughs> going baby. Yeah. I love going. that. I got a question for you. So it's graduation season. Mm -hmm. and, and and I know we've got we've got folks grad, we've got kids graduating from our crew a lot of things happening right now what's your advice I mean you're a female CFO at a fortune 100 company which in and of itself is impressive Thank and you. I can imagine there are some folks watching who might want to be you someday or who are nervous about the AI revolution or don't know where to start so what's your advice for today's grads or or anyone curious about entering into our arena to get to get on that train and not feel left behind? Yeah, well, I would I would say um, be open to any opportunity, right? And and because you don't know, you asked me, did I know I wanted to be the CFO so many years ago? No, I didn't. But I I took uh, different uh, uh, recommendations from from team members from um, from. Uh, mentors to say, hey, go do this. I need you to do this. And I learned and I developed and I grow. And then I would say, hey, don't get stuck in your ways, right? Um, yeah. be, be open to change, because we're talking about change, right? This environment. And then, you know, I, the, the other advice I give is like have an open circle, right? Invite everyone in, because um, differentiation, um, diversity of, you know, thinking, experience, cultures, drives better outcomes, right? So bring in, bring in the big crowd because you're going to get the best results when you, um, when you expand your view. We were talking the other night, you, you were an order processing manager at, I was. Uh, at one point. I was. <laughs> I was going to ask. I was going to ask what your first title was. In, oh, the first title was uh, FP&A, fi Financial Planning yeah, and Analysis. And go. that kind of meant a whole bunch of stuff. But, yeah. uh, and it still does, by the way. Um, but yeah, but then I had order processing. I had credit and collections, just lots of different roles. And I, I, again, I learned, I learned from all of them. And right? that prepared you for. Help me, pre yeah, help prepare me well for, for the role I'm in. Mm. So, which is, which is awesome. Well, congratulations. Thank it's you. Yeah. Thank My you. gosh, and you can tell how much you love your job. I how do. much you love Dell. How much Dell loves you. This is, it's all great. Just a big love fest. <laughs> Just here a in big AI love land. fest at Dell. AI, AI ain't cheap, but at least we're feeling good about it. Yvonne, That's thank right. you so much for being thank on you. the show. This has been Thanks, great, Dave. Thank always I a appreciate pleasure. It. And thank all of you for tuning in to our three days of fabulous coverage here in Las Vegas, Nevada. We're at Dell Tech World. My name's Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech news.